Hello, and welcome to another edition of Jewish Museum Milwaukee's Museum Moments. So um, I'm Molly Dubin, and I'm curator with the Jewish Museum Milwaukee, and I am thrilled to be coming to you today with a moment to do a little preview of our upcoming exhibit called Luba Lukova Designing Justice. So um, many of you know, you've gotten emails, hopefully, or you've seen that uh, the museum just recently reopened. Um, this week we're open to our members and starting Monday to everyone. Uh, the current exhibit, Girl in the Diary, Searching for Rivka from the Lodge Ghetto will be up through the end of the month. So hope you'll have an opportunity to do that but we want to get you excited about our upcoming exhibit. So um, couldn't be more timely. So with that, I'm going to uh, share my screen and pull up a PowerPoint here. And we will talk about the exhibit. So let's share and we're gonna go to the slideshow and from the beginning. There we go. Okay, so Luba Lukova, Designing Justice. Um, we are having a virtual opening event the evening of September 16th. Um, information is on our website and also will be uh, hitting mailboxes and social media platforms soon. Um, we're really excited. We're gonna have a great program including uh, a talk and presentation from Luba, live from her New York studio. So the image you see on the right there is the, the title graphic for the exhibit, which is called uh, Sparking Fire. And you can see there, you have uh, diverse hands rubbing this pencil, you know, this, this metaphor for the idea that design and art can spark flame, can spark fire, can spark idea, can light a fire under people metaphorically to be energized, to get involved with issues that are important to them. And, and particularly here, Luba is looking at social justice issues. So here is a picture of Luba and Luba is internationally renowned. Uh, she was born in Bulgaria, um, but has been in New York since 1991. Uh, the, the piece about Bulgaria is, is interesting in terms of its influence, I think, on her work and the path that she chose in terms of focusing on social justice issues and the medium of graphic design and poster work. So she went to the Fine Arts Academy in Sofia, Bulgaria, and two days after she graduated, uh, the communist uh, regime that was in power there basically instituted a policy that said anyone who was not born in the city um, had to leave, could not work there, could not you know, spend time there. So um, Luba had to leave. She wound up um, taking work with a theater company. And that was where she got her beginnings with posters, with design. Um, but it's so much more than that. The, the idea of posters, when you think about social justice issues, when you think about protests, when you think about grassroots and um, you know the mass population and how do people get out and share their ideas and posters are really that medium. When you think about you know, the 60s, you think about the civil rights movement, you think about anti-war movements, um, you think about people taking to the streets with their homemade signs, often with one central image or metaphor that really could cut beyond uh, language or you know, religious differences, cultural differences. It just one central image that really resonated or one metaphor that really resonated. Um, so that's really one of Luba's reasonings. When you think about, you know, posters, it's also a medium that is much more accessible to the masses. Um, so that really goes along with her social justice message. 
And really because I think of the restrictions that were placed on her um, early, you know, after her, her studies, um, that also influenced her really wanting to create images that energize people and catalyze action, hopefully energizing people to change the world. Um, also to become more empathetic and understanding to some of the issues uh, that are impacting diverse populations across the globe. And of course, in this particular moment, uh, not only in the United States, but across the world, um, there are social justice issues that we've been grappling with for decades, but are very much at you know the forefront of um, lives, society, politics right now. So we are just incredibly excited to be presenting this exhibit, excuse me, exhibit, and to be sharing some of these images, which are very thought provoking, and we really hope will foster dialogue. So this is a piece called Artists Removed from the Picture. And this really speaks to um, the fact that she, you know, as I mentioned, two days after graduation, had to leave Sofia, Bulgaria. Um, and, you know, there were also really restrictions placed on artists. Artists are free thinkers. Um, they are a, a catalyzing force in many ways. You know, when you think about images and metaphors, particularly looking at Luba's, uh, it makes me think of the fact that, you know, that idea that an image is worth a thousand words just could not be more true. So here we have this kind of, you know, artist who is in this negative white, which, you know, really speaks to the transparency or elimination of, of that figure in the foreground, uh, the canvas is falling from the easel, the palette and paintbrushes splattered on the floor as, as this artist, this figure scrambles to get out of the way of being, you know, scooped up and discarded. Um, with, you know, this urban kind of background too, a um, little bit of a contradiction in terms of what you think would be, you know, progressive ideas, uh, growth, and this, you know, and this removal happening. So here we have a piece called Income Gap, and uh, this is actually one of the most popular from Luba's original social justice portfolio that was created in 2008. And that original portfolio had 12 pieces. Um, and I should say that it was shown at the, in, at the first inauguration. There was an exhibit at the first inauguration of President Obama and this portfolio was shown and had a huge impact. This piece in particular um, went viral and it has been used in protests around the world from Turkey to Greece, to Israel, to France, to Iran, to the United States. Um, so this idea here, of course, the, the metaphor of, of the pie, you know, the, the one, you know, the one having the much, the majority and so many, you know, having to struggle for the resources from, you know, the, the smaller piece, the smaller slice. So health coverage, um, this was also one of those from the original portfolio that was shown at uh, Obama's first inauguration, um, healthcare. Healthcare was a central issue um, as far as Obama, um, you know, incredibly critical issue right now. Um, this metaphor of the fact that, you know, healthcare is supposed to protect people, to shield people. And here's this umbrella that, has no shield, has no covering. It's just the bare infrastructure, which of course is no coverage. <laughs> it, it's no haven, no safety uh, whatsoever. Um, so again, this idea of this just bold, succinct metaphor and the universal resonance. Upward mobility. Um, this is an interesting piece. So um, this was actually originally published in the New York Times. And Luba, um, just to give you a little background with her connection to the New York Times, um, 
1991, actually how she got to the United States, 1991, um, some of her poster work was um, submitted to be part of a poster exhibition in Colorado. And uh, she had come to the United States and one of her images had uh, been submitted beyond that without her, her knowledge. And she walked into a, a bookstore or a newsstand in New York and happened to see one of her images. And she took that, armed with that, you know, her, her other portfolio, her biography, went to the New York Times, um, was hired, started out doing, you know, illustrations for book reviews, um, for op-ed pages. And um, she has gone on to, you know, be, have, a tremendous number of works in the New York Times. Uh, they commission her often to do work. Um, so this was originally published in the New York Times and it was done to accompany an editorial that was written by Hillary Clinton during her presidential campaign with looking with the idea of looking to, uh, to help the poor. And you can see here, of course, uh, you know, the idea of, again, this metaphor, a, a figure that has clearly a, a suit. Uh, this is a business person who is, you know, upright, walking in an upwards direction, you know, this kind of straight posturing. And at the foot of this staircase that seems to be crumbling literally beneath the figure uh, is this, this slumped over individual um, whose, you know, whose face and head is obscured by this hood. Um, you can just feel the, the heaviness um, of the situation the, that's weighing on this, on this individual and trying to figure out how they're going to provide for themselves, possibly, how are they going to provide for their family, you know, do they have access to employment opportunities, all of these things uh, coming out in this very succinct image. Education versus war. Um, so here we have, of course, this pencil that is being chewed up in a in a pencil sharpener that is in the shape of some type of uh, a mil military missile or war missile. Um, so this was actually done. She was Luba was commissioned to do this in 2011. The um, War Registers League in New York is is one of the uh, oldest secular organizations of its kind. And in their campaign in 2011, they were really working against the militarization of youth. And so this is the image that Luba came up with. Dialogue. Um, another just, you know, it's one of those images that, that you just get, you look at and you get it. Um, so the two figures in that little line in between the, the open mouths, war is not the answer. So it's as much about the image, the, the positive image, as it is about the negative image. What's in the negative? What seems to be the, the aftermath of the explosion of, uh, of a bomb of some kind. Um, so this idea that if we don't talk to each other, if we don't try to reach common ground, um, if we're not open to those conversations, um, we're going to go down paths that we don't want to go down and could be potentially avoided if we were open to dialogue with one another. So this is a really powerful piece. Um, this is I Have a Dream. And this was done uh, in 2012. And this was part of an exhibit uh, that Luba had in Birmingham, Alabama, to uh, recognize the 50th anniversary of the, the civil rights movement. Um, she's really speaking to the aggression of the time with this color palette, the black, but the red, the red is kind of angry, aggressive, but seated in this very peaceful, pacifistic way is Martin Luther King, who, um, you know, is just staying very calm in response to this aggression that's right in front of him. Uh, also very telling is that the dogs are leashed to unseen handlers, uh, which really is indicative of the invisibility of institutional racism. Very powerful piece. Um, Human race. So this is one of uh, Luba's more recent pieces, 2020, this year. Um, 
couldn't be more fitting for this moment of trying to find unity, to understand that we are all woven together. We all are cut from the same cloth. Um, we, we are in essence, you know, uh, each other's mates, each other's other halves. Um, we're inextricably linked and uh, we need to find a way to, in society, um, to make that work. Uh, it, it just is, it's a very simple but very powerful image. And as I said, couldn't be more fitting in this particular moment. So um, there are gonna be two interactives that are going to be part of the exhibit. And one is called, I want to tell my story. Here's how social justice issues impact me. Uh, and this is just great. So uh, I should say that this installation is shown um, in its original incarnation, which was at the Museum of Design Atlanta. And that is who uh, we are working with, of course, along with Luba, but that is uh, the organization that worked with us to make this exhibit possible, uh, to customize it for our space. And um, this is in Atlanta. And you can see there that there are spokes, these black spokes, and within each spoke is a word or a term that's a social justice issue. And the idea is that the, the visitor will have, and, and you can see it, uh, the, the young woman in the foreground there is holding a spool of red uh, thread off to the side, well, actually you can see behind one of the, the third young lady there, there will be spools of different colored thread and each visitor, viewer will be encouraged to take a color, take a, you know, a, a length of thread and to trace by encircling those cogs what their own social justice journey is and, and the impact on themselves, their community. Um, and as you can just see there, not only is this an incredible means of engagement and interaction, but the more participants, the more layered it becomes. And it becomes this uh, you know, visual aesthetic contribution to the exhibit that uh, really is, is quite thought provoking and, and I think will encourage people to want to come and participate. And uh, here's just a close up to give you an idea of what those uh, those schools look like. Um, that's my last slide. And uh, I don't want to give away any more because this is just supposed to be a preview. Um, but hopefully it has um, energized you to uh, to be excited to come to see the exhibit and to participate in our virtual opening event, which as I mentioned at the top of the moment is the evening of September 16th. So we are very excited to bring this and all of its layers to our community. And we really hope that our community will be excited about it too and excited to be engaged with it because if there's a time to be involved, there's a moment to be involved. This is it. So with that, I'm going to conclude my museum moment. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. And we will look forward to seeing you soon. If you want to learn more about the exhibit, upcoming programs, visit our website, www.jewishmuseummilwaukee.org. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.